In this video, I want to talk what are components in view, how we can create them and bind data inside these components. Hi, I am Alexander Kaherhin from Monster Lessons Academy, where I am teaching you how to become a developer or improve your skills of being a developer in learning by doing way. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will link everything that I am mentioning in the description box below. So let's jump right into it. So in previous video we successfully checked all our file structure and how view renders applications for us. And actually for now we have two components, app view, we already checked it, and inside view we have home component. But actually the first question is what are components at all? So the idea of all frontend frameworks is to create code in components. This means that you have some JavaScript business logic plus template plus CSS which is completely isolated. And it is isolated inside the component. Which means component is something like a small building block to build your application. And you can just reuse every component everywhere if you need to or you just use it for the single purpose. This is completely fine. For now I want with you to create new component which we will use for a separate page, user list and then we see on the real example how it is working. For this let's first create inside source views new file. Why here? Because as I said already we have app view this is our main file and then we have router and inside router we are defining our routes. So actually all our routes are living inside views folder. So here we want to create users list dot view. And as you can see we are naming all files from the capital letter. This is the convention of view. And actually as you can see all our files have this view extension. And it is possible that your editor doesn't understand this extension. I hope that you are using some uh, normal popular editor like for example Visual Studio Code or whatever and you can simply install a plugin for the syntax highlight highlighting for view just through your plugin manager in your editor. So if you didn't do it yet then just do it now. Now let's talk about files. Actually in view everything is living in the single file. Normally in other frontend frameworks we are splitting like HTML file, then we have like JavaScript file and CSS file. In view we have everything in single file. So normally we have three blocks and the first block is our template. So here we close template, template. After the template block we have script block, this is where our JavaScript business logic is, and now we have style block. And in style block we have our styles. So this is the standard way of creating components inside view. And of course you can omit every block, but normally we will have at least template, because we need to render something in the component, and we need script at least to define the name for our component. Now let's render something inside our users list. So let's add here div with the text users list. So actually this will be a page to render a list of users. Now we have script, and here we want to export default an object. And inside object we need at least one property which is name and name will be users list. So it is just the same name like the name of the file. So our component is actually completely ready. So we created our template and a script. But now we want to register it inside our router. For this we need to jump back inside source router index and add here one more parameter inside our routes array. So here we need to add an object and our each object for the route definition has three properties. So first of all is path and our path will be for example slash users. Now we have a name. Actually name is an alias to work with URLs and we will talk about name later. For now we can simply say that this is users list. And now component is the most important. This is the component which will be rendered for our route. And in our case it is users list. And now on the top we need to import 
our new component, users list component, from add views users list dot view. And actually this dot view you don't need to write because this project was generated by Vue CLI and the webpack understands inside that all extensions with dot view it needs to treat correctly like view files. So this is completely fine to write like this. And actually here we have add and just to remind you this we need for our absolute path. So we avoid to use here a dots to have relative path and this add symbol it's just a source. So we successfully registered users list inside our routes. Now let's jump inside server. This is my serve command. We don't have any errors here. So let's look in browser. As you can see, we don't have any errors here. Now let's try to jump in slash users uh, path. And as you can see now we have on our page users list. And now we're jumping back and this is home page. So as you can see we already created our single page application. Because without page reloading we see our new content. So here is our users list and this means that our component was successfully rendered. Now we need to render some data inside our component. So for this we need to jump back in users list view and actually here in the template we can render some JavaScript logic or properties from our component. And in order to do that we are using double brackets like this and then inside we can write for example 1 plus 1. And if we will look in browser you can see that here we have 2. Which means these constructions in double brackets view evaluates and then renders for us the result. And actually this command is known as string interpolation. So this is how we can compile any JavaScript code inside template. But actually you should never ever do this because this is like bad smelling code. Normally you want to write here only properties from your component. Which means here we can somehow create properties and then render them inside our template. Now, how we can create these properties? And for this we can define here one more property data. And the important part that this is not a property, this is a function inside object. And it's not here a dot and an object, but it is a function. And inside this function we are returning an object. And this is super important because if you will make it a property and not a function, then view can't recalculate changing of the properties. So here we are returning an object and here inside we can write any properties that we need. For example, let's create property foo and it will equal string foo. So this is how we are defining some properties or variables inside our component. And now inside our template we can simply write foo and in this case we will render our property foo from our component. As you can see in browser we have users list foo which means we successfully rendered our property inside template. So once again with data you define any properties that you need. Actually we can here say like bar equals bar and so on. Or it can be of course an object, an array, whatever you need. Or maybe a number, a boolean. And then you simply render it with double brackets inside template. But we are actually in the page of users list. Which means we want to render an array of users. This is why let's remove here foo and bar and add real users. So here we can say that we have an array of users and everything that we are writing here it's just a plain JavaScript. So here we have user with ID 1 and name is user 1 and let's say that we have age 20. Now I will copy this object in order to avoid typing. So we have in our array three users. So first of all here will be ID 2 and user will be 2 and age 25 and then here is id3 and user3 and age30. So we successfully created our array and actually we can simply write here users to check how it looks in browser. And as you can see it looks exactly like an array. But of course we want to render some data properly in order to show them to user with good UI. And of course we can't really use them like this in the template. And for this we can uh, use specific attribute from view to render our arrays. 
and it is called v4, so we are using v4 when we want to render some loops. So actually here I want to remove everything inside div, and I want to write here v4 as an attribute, and as a value of v4 we will have user in users. And what it is about? This user property is our property from the component, so this is it on the bottom, and this user is our local property when we are going through the loop. So normally in JavaScript you have like a map, for example, function or each, and then you are getting like an each argument of your array. And in the same way it is working here. So you have here user, and this is your local property. So now inside our div we can render this user. For example, here we can say username, and as you can see I am using double brackets here again, and we can check in browser what we have. So actually we have here an error, and the error is elements in iteration expect to have vbind key. So what we need to do here is add a key attribute. So it will look like this, key, and here will be user.id. What does it mean? View can't just render an array, because we didn't provide a unique key to render our array. And in our case, id is the unique property of each element inside the array. And when we are using v4, we need to say view what is the unique key inside our array. Then it can render it better. This is why we need always to provide here a key. In other case, we will get an error. And it is important that you put colon before key, because here we are given the property and not the string. And actually about this data binding we will talk in the next video. This is why you just need to check how it works later. For now we just write it like this to render our v4 loop. So as you can see in browser our users were rendered, and if we will check the DOM, here we have three divs, div user1, user2, and user3. So this is exactly how we are rendering arrays inside the template for the view. So we have here whatever element we need, with v4, inside we have a local property in our array, and we need for sure to give here a key, which will be the unique id, or whatever string, uh, what you have inside every element. And now inside we can write, for example, username is, and here, for example, user age, years old. Now let's look in browser. As you can see, view successfully rendered for us everything correctly. So we successfully rendered array in our new component, which we successfully binded to our router. In this video, you learned how to render components inside view, how to bind them inside our router, and how to render properties from our component inside the template. And we even used together v4 loop to render the array of our users. And if view for beginners course is too easy for you, you can always go and check down in the description box below my full view course, which is going 10 hours, where we are creating the real project from the empty folder until the real finished application. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in my next video.